Let me take this opportunity to say that, that uh, I appreciate you watching us online or visiting us in service. It's also all, always a privilege. I had somebody to stop by this Wednesday night and say to me that they'd been watching us online and how that the Word of God had touched their hearts and that humbled me. And I pray that I can always preach the truth in love and love and, but also preach with conviction. So I, I appreciate you watching us. Uh, if you feel a desire and ever feel uh, like the Lord's speaking to you to give to our local church ministries, I encourage you to do that. You can do that by going to easytithe.com and finding Prospect Church of God there. And uh, you can do that. And I believe there's a QR code there that you can use there to take you directly into our, our giving website. We appreciate that. We are a small church with a big heart. And trying to do ministry is tough in the day we live. So I would encourage you to do that if at all possible. And um, not asking you to take tithe from your local church. Your tithe belongs to your local church, not ours. Uh, but maybe there's an offering that you would feel like giving to our church. And I would I'd really appreciate that. God bless you. Well, good evening. Good to see all of you here in the house of the Lord today, this afternoon, on this beautiful day the Lord's given us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We need to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Are you glad tonight? Should be. Should be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who he's redeemed out of the... Hand of the enemy. God is good to us, isn't he? We, we say that, but we don't even really think of the power behind that, of how good God is to us. He is such a good God. He is such a good God. Uh, you never talk to Gary Sears unless he says this, you're blessed and highly favored. I've known Gary for years, and I don't know if I've ever had a conversation with him one time. That he didn't say that you're blessed and you're highly favored. You're blessed and highly favored. So tonight, uh, I've come to have church. I've come to just let God be God and the Lord be the Lord and me just be his servant who's hungry for a move of God. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the rain. We need a rain. Boy, it's been hot outside, hasn't it? I understand you had some good rains this week. I went down to see my grandbabies a couple of days be with them for my birthday and by the way thank you for all the birthday gifts this morning and the love that you showed me this morning thank you for all of that but I went down to be with my grandbabies and boy it was hot we didn't get any rain down there but I understood you maybe had some rain around here this week nothing like the rain is it when you're really needing rain you, you ever really needed rain in your life I'm talking about and we talked about it some this morning, how we go through those times of life, those temporary places. But oh, how we need the rain, Amen. the rain of God. And I pray that that's what happens in this place tonight. Would you stand with me and let's pray. It's good to have uh, Sister Linda and her friend here tonight. Always good to have Linda with us. She's a what you call a Baptocostal, I believe. And uh, we, we love having her around. She, she's such a precious lady and uh, we love her. And she, she knows how good a brother she's got in Yogi, too. She'll always tell you, that's my, that's my brother. <clears throat> I've never heard him say a whole lot about her, but she brags on him a, a, a whole lot. But uh, they're both, I've, I've often said this, and I mean it. If the world was full of Yogi and Barbara McDowell's, wouldn't it be a great world? And I mean that. If it was just full of people like Yogi and Barbara, it would be... Just a, the greatest world, and there he is. And so let's pray tonight and ask the Lord to do something for us. Father in heaven, I love you tonight. I thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray tonight for the power of the Lord to come into this place. You know that I need you tonight. You know that I must have you tonight. Lord, I pray tonight that I'm in the divine will of God, and you would touch us tonight with a very powerful service. 
And God, I will praise you and glorify your name. In all the earth, your name's to be praised. And I do give you praise tonight. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Come on and bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. I'll sing it again. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Give Him loud praise. Would you give Him loud praise tonight? <laughs> Ushers, please come tonight to receive our uh, Sunday evening tithe and offerings. Amen. they got to go get the, the buckets there, the Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets. Amen. I got a pastor friend. He's still there. He's uh, th this gentleman's still there. He's mentally challenged, and uh, they'll let him take the offering up sometimes, and he won't leave you until he gets something from you. That's why he lets him take up the offering sometimes. And uh, 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 yeah, don't don't be like that. Uh, family going home one time from church and Pat the, the daddy was saying how bad the preacher was the the mama was saying how bad the singing was and the little girl said well I thought it was a pretty good show for a quarter amen so so uh, please please give tonight and let the Lord bless you for it amen brother Terry pray for us Amen. All right. Amen. <clears throat> Turn to page 277 in your red back hymnal if you can find you one tonight. Aren't you glad we still got some in the church? Amen. I love this old song. It says, I'm redeemed. Sweet as a song. Amen. I'm redeemed. Sing it with me tonight. Sweet as a song I'm singing today. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Trouble and sorrow have vanished away. I have been, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed by love divine. It's glory, glory. Christ is mine, He's mine all to Him. I now resign. I have been, I have been redeemed. 
great is my joy now as onward I go I'm redeemed I'm redeemed all the way homeward my praises shall flow I have been I have been redeemed yes I'm redeemed by love divine it's glory glory Christ is mine he's mine all to him I now resign I have been I have been redeemed precious indeed it's my Savior to me I'm redeemed I'm redeemed happy in glory someday I shall be I have been I have been redeemed I'm redeemed by love divine it's glory glory Christ is mine he's mine all to him I now resign I have been I have been redeemed precious indeed it's my Savior to me I'm redeemed I'm redeemed happy in glory someday I shall be I'm redeemed I have been redeemed well I'm redeemed by love divine it's glory glory Christ is mine he's mine all to him I now resign I have been I have been redeemed amen won't you praise him tonight that you're redeemed by love divine amen no greater words can be spoken than I'm redeemed amen I love this old song on page 181 it's a little bit slower we'll do another in a minute but blessed assurance Jesus is mine I never will forget standing beside the bedside of Caleb's uh, second grade or fourth grade teacher dying of leukemia and uh, dying, her last moments of life we was around her bed singing blessed assurance Jesus is mine we got through it and she said would you sing it one more time blessed assurance Jesus is mine sing it with me blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine heir of salvation purchase of God born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song I'm praising my Savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long perfect submission perfect delight visions of rapture now burst on my sight angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love I'll sing it tonight this is my story this is my song 
I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching, waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Look at that verse 3, perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting. Looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Wow. Let's sing that one more time. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost it. Would you lift your hand and sing this chorus with me one time? This is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Now, would you lift both hands and just... Hallelujah! 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 This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Would you give him loud praise tonight? He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. I like these old songs, don't you? I like 265. It says, Love Lifted Me. Let's try that one. Amen. 265. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. 
very deeply stained within seeking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now safe am i love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me all my heart to him i'll give ever to him i cling in his blessed presence live ever his praises sing love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs faithful love the service to to him belong love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted Lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by His love out of the angry waves. I like this. He's the master of the sea. Billows His will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be be saved today love lifted me love lifted me oh yes when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted Lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Why don't you praise him for the love of God? Can we do one more? I hardly ever lead singing that I don't like to lead page 279. When you get to thinking about love lifted me and, and all those songs, it just makes me want to see him. Does anybody else want to see him? Does anybody else really want to look upon his face? The one who saved you by his grace. Page 279, sing it with me tonight. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, through Him I must win. And oh, 
I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice when in service for my lord dark may be the night but i cling more close to him he will give me light satan's snares may vex my soul turn my thoughts aside but my lord goes ahead leads whatever be tied and oh i want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice when in valleys low i look toward the mountain high and behold savior there leading in the fight with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low guiding me i can see as i onward go and oh i want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice when before me billows rise from the mighty deep then my lord directs my bark he does safely keep and he leads me gently on through this world below he's a real friend to me and oh i love him so and oh i want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice amen hallelujah hallelujah amen you wonder why everything's going on like it's going on why everything's just gone nuts and crazy and transgenders at the olympics and and uh, making it look like the lord's supper and all that the lord's coming that's why it's happening. It's leading right up to the return of Jesus Christ. It shouldn't surprise us. The Lord's coming. In the twinkling of an eye. Come, Lord, ever so quickly. Come, Lord. Give him praise one more time tonight. He's worthy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You can be seated tonight. God bless you. Amen. Brother Terry, you wouldn't have a song tonight, would you? I don't know if you can play both at the same time. I'd like to watch that. I've never seen you do that before. Uh, can you sing it? Yeah, go up there and play and sing us a song tonight. <laughs> don't you preach Saint Sister Shirley tonight. Amen. She can play them songs. Amen. Amen.
that be He gave His life What more could He give Oh how He loves you Oh how He loves me Oh how He loves you and me. Would you all sing that with me tonight one time? I'm Floods my soul Something happened give him praise tonight hallelujah thank you lord thank you brother terry god bless you sir would anybody might just happen to have a good testimony tonight before i share the little bit of the word that the lord put into my heart tonight Does anybody maybe the lord's a lot of churches just don't do this anymore but i like to hear good testimonies because god's not dead if you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn with me to Leviticus chapter 26 tonight. I'm going to read a couple of verses there. Then we're going to go over to 2 Kings chapter 18 and read some verses there. Not just this church, but the church of America is in need of a rain. We are in desperate need of a move of God in our lives and in our churches. Not just one denomination, but every church, every God-called church is in need of a fresh touch of the Lord. And I want to talk to you tonight about a, the abundance of rain, that God can send an abundance of rain. Leviticus chapter 26, if you want to stand for the reading of the Word, go down to verse 3 with me. And verse 4. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, could that be where our problem is right there? Could that be why no rain is falling in a lot of places? Then will I give rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. That's a big if, isn't it? Then over in 1 Kings chapter 18, you know the story, 1 Kings 18. Go down to verse 41 with me. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up 
eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to Mount Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground. Kind of sounds like Johnny, doesn't it? Bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass that the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up. Say to Ahab, Prepare your chariots and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime... It happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Does anybody believe tonight that we need a fresh rain in the church? Father in heaven, I ask you to help me tonight. I ask you to put this into my heart, into my spirit, that, Lord, what we need, it's not programs, it's not, it's not wealth, it's not finances, it's not uh, all those things. We need a rain. We need a fresh move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, God, I give you praise and I give you glory for the rain tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Can you imagine waking up to a world in which rain has not come for three and one half years? That's a long time with no rain, isn't it? Three and a half years of no rains. You ever thought about the ramifications of that? No crops, no food to eat, a severe food shortage, economic failure, the rivers are dried up. The fish are dying. Such a pitiful sight. People are going insane. You know, you would go insane, really, with three and a half years of no rain. And that is exactly the scene here in Israel in 1 Kings 17 and 18. Ahab and Jezebel, uh, can you tell me, uh, you know, you may not believe me, but there's a spirit of Jezebel... That's still in the land today. That's hindering the rain. That's hindering God's people. But Ahab and Jezebel have found, have led a nation astray through idol worship and silencing God's prophets. Their their gods were Baal and Ashtaroth. And one of the chief claims of Baal worshipers was that Baal controlled the weather And every rainfall was attributed to that idol God. So if it rained, he had to make it rain. If the rain fell, this God had to make it rain. Elijah shows up. His whiskers are blowing in the wind and his sunburned arms are raised in the air. And he rests his bony finger, his finger on Ahab's chin. And he says... It ain't going to rain, boy, till I say it rains. Not going to happen till I say it rains. I wish some Christians could get that bold again. Does anybody else know what I'm talking about? We sit down and we sour up and wish things were different. We, we sit down and we complain about the world, but we're not willing to put our fingers into Ahab's chin and say, let me tell you something, boy, that ain't how it's going down. Because I don't serve your God. Does anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? I wish we could get some boldness like like, like this man here has. And he sticks his fingers there and he says it's not going to rain till I say it's going to rain. And this is an amazing story with a lot of things that I want us to talk about tonight. You see, you got to prepare for rain. There's a confrontation. Elijah confronts the king. You and your fathers have troubled Israel because you've forsaken the commandments of the Lord. This is the problem. 
Elijah confronts the people in 1 Kings 18 and 21. How long are you going to halt between two opinions? Why can't you make your mind up? And I could, I could chuck some coin right there. There's some people in the church need needs to make their mind up. There are some people sat on the pews of churches every week that's never made up their mind. Because they go out, Brother Richard, and try to serve the world and the Lord at the same time, and it ain't going to work. How long are you going to halt between two opinions? You can't have your... Has anybody got, ever got stuck on a fence? I have. It ain't fun. I remember deer hunting one time, or some kind of hunting, and I crawled on top of an old barbed wire fence and it got hung in my britches. And you, don't, you, you may not believe this, but it took me a long time to get off that fence because I was hung. And that's where a lot of people are, Brother Bird. They're hung on the fence. You've got to get mad at it like I did and decide you're going to get out of there. Man, if you rip your pants off, you've got to get off the fence. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So I got off the fence. And there are some people that need to make up their opinions. What are they going to do? Are they going to serve the Lord or not? So he confronts them. Halt means to stumble or wobble or, or falter. What are you going to do? Then Elijah forces the people to face their condition and realize that it was not as good as they'd been told. Oh, Lord, don't let me get too mean there. Because everybody wants us to think everybody, everything's all right, you know. The news media makes you want, want to make you think everything's all right. It's okay. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. Everything's going to be okay. No, I'm telling you, we're in bad shape. We better understand it. Because it wasn't as good as they'd been told. If you listen to CN, BN, DEN, and all them channels, they'll tell you everything's all right. But everything's not all right. So Elijah confronts the religious trend of the day. He did what no other would do. He challenged the status quo and the religious patterns of the day. Elijah was not afraid to say, your God doesn't exist and your religion won't work. Sister Sharon, we're afraid to say that. They're not afraid to say that to Christians. They're not afraid to say that to us. But uh, there's a lot of ramifications when you start saying that to other religions. Brother Gamble, they'll kill you over it. You don't, you don't say anything against their religions. And, and so we're kind of backed in a corner a little bit. But Elijah wasn't afraid. You see, any religion is a good religion until it's called upon to produce something. His challenge was, the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Amen. So the one that brings the answer is the one that's going to be God. Amen. Then you've got the construction. Twelve stones representing the twelve tribes of Israel were gathered to build to rebuild the altar. God help us to rebuild the altar. Oh, there's a lot of preaching material right here. I can get 25 sermons out of this right here. God help us to rebuild the altar. We're living in days you can go in churches and not even find the altar. You can't even find them. I know one church, the church went one Sunday and couldn't find the altars and the pastor had took them out back and threw them in a garbage pile. And if we don't get back to the altar, I don't know what's going to happen. Amen. And that drew everybody's attention back to the original covenant with God. The altar that we need to construct today must be built on the basics of the original vision, mandate, and covenant of God. Amen. Elijah called for the most precious commodity of the day. 
He calls for 12 barrels of water. It was a sacrifice to pour out the water. But the lesson that God wanted his people to learn was this. No sacrifice, no fire. Could it be that we're just not willing to pay for the fire anymore? Could it be willing we're just something that we're not willing to pray for the fire anymore? And fast for the, pri for the fire anymore? And be faithful for the fire anymore? So he makes that challenge. He takes that water. And God's saying, if you don't sacrifice, you're not going to get the fire. But then the Bible said that the fire of the Lord fell. Somebody say, let the fire fall one more time. Let the fire fall one more time. The prophets of Baal were taken to the brook and killed at the hands of Elijah. There was no... Now this sounds harsh. This sounds kind of like, how could that happen? But this happened. There was no peaceful coexistence. No games and no compromise. There had to be a total removal of the evil influence. And we don't like to preach like that. Because we'd rather mingle with them. Yes, sir, Patrick. How can two walk together except they be agreed? So Elijah knew this and he knew, knew something drastic had to happen. No peaceful co coexistence. I don't like, and you've heard me say this before, those signs on the back of cars that says coexist. I don't like that sign. Not at all. Am I preaching too hard? You're just too quiet or something tonight. But then there was prayer for the rain. James 5 and 17 and 18, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elijah prayed and the earth brought forth no rain. You ever prayed and there be no rain? You ever prayed and it didn't happen? You ever prayed and wondered where in the world God was? My children are lost. My husband don't know you. You prayed that prayer, but you got no answer. Has anybody beside this preacher ever been there? You prayed, but it didn't rain. But here's, here's the key thing. He prayed again. You ever heard somebody say, all you have to do is pray one time and leave it with God? You ever heard somebody say that? You're, they'll say you're faithless if you have to pray more than one time. Can I give you a brief, I'm not country, I've just heard some country words before. Hogwash, amen. Because Brother Johnny, I find myself a lot of times having to pray again. And again. And again. And verse 42 reveals that Ahab goes to eat while, A while Elijah goes to pray. What a contrast. While one person goes to feast and party, another goes to fast and pray. It's like a lot in the church. Amen. Elijah's prayer involved some things. It involved humility. The Bible said that he had his face between his knees. Could God be tired of our lay me down to sleep prayers. Could he be tired of just uh, praying over food or praying when we need something? 
Could it be that we have to get back down on the ground and get our face between our knees and say, God, I really need this today? He became humble. But then he had faith. His five senses were responded by faith. He heard what no one else was hearing. What did he hear? He visioned a cloudy sky like nobody else was seeing. He could smell the aroma of rain. I believe he could taste the flavor of rain. You ever done that, been so thirsty? You ever been so thirsty that you just, you could almost taste it? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I believe he could taste the rain. Not only that, he finally touched the wetness of the rain. It happened for him. I'm here to tell somebody tonight, don't pray one time. Pray again and a pray and again and a pray it again. I like the number of prayers. You know when it started happening? Does anybody know what God's number is? Seven times they walked around the wall of Jericho. And it was on the seventh prayer that Elijah prayed that he began to see and to feel God. So don't stop praying. I'm just telling somebody tonight, don't stop praying. We want to, we want to quit, but don't stop praying. Just don't stop praying. Verse 44 reveals that he sent his servant seven times to seek out a cloud. He finally sees the cloud the size of a man's hand. That didn't mean much to the servant, but it meant everything to Elijah. You know, uh, I told uh, somebody tonight that this morning I... I felt kind of a little breakthrough. I felt a little breakthrough this morning. How many know that when you can just see a little bit, it helps a whole lot? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You prayed for something. You ever prayed for somebody and prayed for somebody? You never heard them talk about God before. You never heard them say anything about the Lord but all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they just said a little bit. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You know what that did? That raised up in you a, a hope and a promise that God has heard my prayers, even though it might just be a little hand that I'm seeing. I'm telling some parent tonight, thank God for the little hand that you see. Somebody help me preach a minute. Thank God for the little hand that you see. Praise Him, right? I, I wish somebody praise Him right now for the little hand that you've seen. Hallelujah! You've seen a little hand. It just tells you that God is working. God is doing something. I done seen a little hand. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if that did anything for you or not, but that did a whole lot for me right there. I saw a little hand. Hallelujah. I, I'm talking to somebody right there. Thank God for the little hand that you're seeing. Thank you, Lord. Elijah knew the cardinal principle. Never underestimate the strength of a little cloud. You ever been outside and thought it ain't going to rain much? That's just a little cloud. But all of a sudden that little cloud just burst open. And you got soaked before you can get in the house. Never underestimate the strength of a little cloud. And I'm telling prospect, never underestimate when you just feel God moving. 
It may not be where you're running and jumping and hollering and screaming. But you need to thank God for every little cloud that comes along. Because you never know, Brother Terry, when that little cloud's going to break out. And all of a sudden, it's going to bring a rain that refreshes everybody in the house and out of the house and around the house. Oh, God, thank you for the little clouds of life. Thank you for the little clouds of life. Thank you for the little clouds of life. Because I have went through seasons I didn't see any clouds. I didn't see the rain. I didn't see the promise of the rain. But then I was able to see God with a little cloud. You see, you never know where revival may come from. You just may never know when God starts a revival. You know, in October, we've got a young man coming that I'm anxious to have to come to church. Every Sunday, he sends me a encouraging word. I, I, he hadn't missed a week. And I don't know how many weeks. And every week, I could read them to you. Every week, they have been on spot. Every week, they've been exactly what I needed to hear before I came to this pulpit. And it's been happening for months. That that, that, that kid, he's a kid been sending me those messages. You never know when revival's going to start Amen. or how it's going to start. I don't know about you, but some of the best revivals I've ever been in, an evangelist never entered the door of the church. A man never walked through that had been scheduled for a revival. Some of the best revivals I've ever been in was when God just broke out on a Sunday night. And you couldn't stop it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh God, Brother Terry, I'm so hungry that I wish something would happen here that a, that a rain would start and somebody would say, Pastor Gann, why don't we come back tomorrow night? And we'd come back on Monday night and there'd be so many show up and get saved that somebody says, Pastor Gad, why don't we go on another night? We did that one time. Brother Hale was the evangelist at that point. That revival, Brother Hale was not scheduled for the revival. Everybody knows Brother Hale. Y'all don't know who I'm talking about. He's been here several times and his wife. But he was just a young preacher then. And he wasn't scheduled for the revival. And my, but the guy for revival canceled on me. And Brother Hale came, what did he come for? To bring us a flyer from his church. And, and uh, this praying woman right here, she said, Honey, that's who you're supposed to get for revival right there. She said, That's the one that God's going to use for revival. Brother Terry, that revival went six weeks. Forty plus people gave their heart to Jesus Christ during that revival. There was 30 something got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in that revival. I told you about the man who was an alcoholic and, a, and a, he, he, was, he grew his own dope and made his own whiskey, did everything in that revival that just broke out. And he'd been out of church 20 years. 20 years doing everything you can imagine. And he heard there was a revival going on. He gave his heart to Jesus Christ that night. And God saved him. Amen. God saved him. I told you about I heard that night he got home something happened at his house. And he said, well, I ain't going back. It must not have been real. And I showed up at his house like, a, like Elijah the next morning. And I went to his house. Right at sun, sunrise the next morning. And I got, I'm talking about a man as big or bigger than Chris. And his hands this big. And I got up in his face. You don't get up in a big man's face like that. I got up in his face and I said, I heard you said you wasn't coming back to church. I'd rather you take your hand and smack me across my face as hard as you could smack me than for me to hear those words come out of your mouth. 
Can I tell you, because of that revival, and I believe the obedience, not putting myself in anything, but because the Lord told me to show up on His door, doorstep and confront Him. Pastored a little church out of Rogersville, Tennessee. For probably 25 years out of Rogersville, Tennessee up there now. Why? Because you never know when revival's going to start out. You never know what God's going to do on a Sunday night. That's why you show up for church, because you just never know. You just never know what God's going to do and how God's going to do it. You just never know how revival's going to start. It's not always the big time evangelist. It's not always the stained glass cathedral with its pipe organ and crystal chandeliers. The revival may come through a little child. It may appear insignificant, but don't ever write it off. You have to remember Jesus was born in a manger. John the Baptist appeared in camel's hair. You just never know how it's going to come. What if John the Baptist showed up in a lot of churches today? Yeah. Bringing the message of Jesus. Eating his, his locust and wild honey. You just never know how something's going to start. It may not look like you want it to look. It may not appear like you want it to appear. But you just have to say, God, I want the rain. I want the rain. Ever how you want to send it, God, it's all right to send the rain. It may start. Oh, my Lord, I wish we had this back in church right here. We're missing so much. The church as a whole is missing so much. I wish we had our grannies back in our altars. I wish we had the people back that when you turn to page 279 and start singing, Oh, I want to see him, they acted like they wanted to see him. Don't get too quiet on me. I wish we had those. I've seen revival start out of a move of God where somebody just got to singing an old song. Somebody got a shouting and running. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you, did you ever see anything like that, Brother Terry? Somebody just got to singing an old song. And all of a sudden, somebody went, Woo! Whoop, Glory! And I want to tell you, a whoop glory will get on you quick. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? A real whoop glory. Because you feel it. All of a sudden you feel that. And it feels like an electricity come through you. Does anybody, does anybody remember? Does anybody? Something goes through you like a... You know what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden you get the can't help it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And all of a sudden you just can't help it. And there's a worship that burst out. And there's people running. There's people shouting. And there's people worshiping and jumping and shouting. And all of a sudden you realize the rain showed up. This is God. We better enjoy this rain. Oh God, we need the rain one more time. I still believe in the rain. I still believe in old-fashioned revival. I still believe that God wants to pour out His Spirit in the last days upon all flesh. And His sons and daughters shall prophesy. I still believe that. I don't believe the windows of heaven are shut up. I believe the windows of heaven are open for anybody who really wants the rain of the Holy Ghost to fall upon their midst one more time. I still believe that. And I want that. I want that. Other day, it's so hot down in 
in uh, Lawrenceburg. Y'all may not have ever done this, but when I was in Middle Tennessee, we called it a hose pipe. Does anybody know what a hose pipe is? Y'all call it a garden hose. Middle Tennessee, it's a hose pipe. We, we didn't, that old hose, anybody drunk, ever drunk water out of a, ho, out of a, ho, a garden hose? Some of the best water you ever drunk. Come from one of them. We didn't worry about all those chemicals and plastics and, and all those things back then. We just drunk out of the hose pipe. And I'll tell you something else we did with it on a hot day that I love to do. Another day, I couldn't do it because my stinking son and his wife had my grandkids grounded. I hope he's listening. I hope you're taping that. I got in trouble. I do want you to know I got in trouble. We was keeping them. And they said that you're, they're only allowed to watch what you watch on TV. I kind of got in trouble because I watched monster trucks. <laughs> I said, I like monster trucks. I watched, we watched some monster trucks and... and uh, First thing Thatcher did when his daddy got home, he says, Papa, let me watch monster trucks tonight. <laughs> but I couldn't do it the other day, but I told him I, I thought we was going to be able to do it. One of the best things on a hot day is for somebody to take a hose pipe and just squirt you with it. you talking about fun. Now that's fun stuff. Kids today don't even know how to have fun. That's fun stuff. You shoot it up there and see if you can see how high you can shoot it and it fall down on you and you just do all kind of things with it because it feels good when that water's falling on you. How many know it feels good when the water's falling on us? Oh, a lot of us have been through some very hot, difficult seasons. A lot of us have been through some very difficult season of life. And how good it would feel for all of a sudden you feel a rain that comes down from glory and glory only. And fall upon His people one more time. God, we need an abundance of rain. We need an abundance of rain. We need a flash flood. I, I, I think God's tired of us singing, there shall be showers of blessings. I believe we need a flood. I believe we need a flood. I said we need a flood to wash away all of our uh, all of our ugliness and all of our sin and everything that we've been doing so the real rain of God can fall one more time in the church. Does anybody tonight beside this preacher really won't rain in the church one more time? Would you give him the loudest praise that you could give him tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know you, I'll tell you somebody else needs this. Our children need the rain. They need to experience the rain. Sharon was telling me the other day that her heart is not to just have fun with the kids, but them to experience God. You're talking about somebody that needs to experience God. Our children need to experience a move of God. If we're not careful, they'll read about the rain in some history book someday. And wonder what was that all about. I wonder what that felt like. Because they've never felt anything like that before. You know what that ought to do? That ought to burden us to pray for the rain right there. That ought to burden us to fall on the ground and put our heads between our knees and cry out to God. I'm not going to quit praying. I don't care how many times it takes. I'm going to pray for the rain. Would you stand with me tonight? Somebody come to the piano. Sister Shirley, come on. Rain, rain. Rain, rain, rain. Rain, rain, rain.
Send down the ladder rain. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain. Send down the ladder rain. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain. Send down the ladder rain. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain. Send down the ladder rain. There's healing in the rain, Lord. Healing in the rain. Send down the ladder rain. There's healing in the rain, Lord. Healing in the rain. Healing in the ladder rain. I need the rain, Lord. I need the rain. I need the ladder rain. I need the rain, Lord. I need the rain. I need the ladder rain. If you need it, lift your hand. I need the rain, Lord. I need the rain. I need the ladder rain. I need the rain, Lord. I need the rain. I need the ladder rain. Would you do something for this pastor tonight? Elijah had to pray for it. He had to believe for it. He had to prepare for it. He had to confront for it. The enemy don't want us to have the rain. We have to confront the enemy. Say, that's not up to you. God sends the rain. God sends the rain. Would you find you a place tonight? The first step to having the rain, I believe, is praying for it and wanting it. If you don't want it, don't worry, you won't have it. If you don't desire it, don't you worry about it whatsoever. If you're afraid of getting your hair messed up a little bit, don't worry. You won't have to worry about it. You don't have to have it. But if you're not concerned about all those things and you'd really like the, the rain of the Holy Spirit to fall upon you and our church, I wish you'd come somewhere and find you a place to kneel or sit and put your hands in your face or whatever you need to do and say, Lord, we need the rain. We need the rain, Lord. We need the rain. We need the rain. Our church needs the rain. Oh, God, we need the rain. 